Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Realistic with Realistic Productions doing another tutorial for soundoracle.net. And today we're going to go over getting rid of, rid of a resonant frequency in vocals. Oftentimes I'm hearing this cut through on the mix and everything and it sounds really bad. It's a really bad frequency and it happens from a couple things. It could be bad mic choice. It's maybe not the right mic to use on that singer, maybe bad mic placement if the singer got a little too loud and too close to it. And what it does is when the sound is too loud and too close to the mic at certain frequencies, it causes the diaphragm of the microphone to rattle a little bit. And then we start to hear this frequency cut through and it's really bad. It's usually around two to three K and we just want to be able to avoid it. And usually we try to avoid it in the recording process, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes we didn't record it. So I'm going to go through a, diff a couple different tips that we can get rid of it or ease up on it a little bit in the mix. All right, so now we're going to go into Pro Tools. All right, so I have Pro Tools open up here. And as always, if you have the capability, open up your DAW and do this with me. You'll always get way more out of this. If you're following the steps with me, you'll be able to retain it a lot more. This is going to be another short tutorial. This is just about getting the little resonant frequencies out of vocals. And that can happen because of a few different reasons. Maybe it was the wrong mic choice. It's not the right fit for the vocalist. It could be bad mic placement. It, maybe the singer's getting too close. And sometimes the singers will get a little bit too loud and it will cause it. And so basically what this is, it's this awful frequency that happens when there's too much sound pressure on the diaphragm of the microphone is it causes the diaphragm to ring and it gives us just horrendous sound that I absolutely hate and I think you should hate it too and you're going to hate me after this video because I'm going to be pointing these frequencies out and probably just ruin the quality of vocals for you for the rest of your life because I know when I was taught this, it ruined it, and that's all I hear now when I hear bad vocal recordings. So let's listen to this, and we'll we'll try to pay attention, and I'll point out what, uh, what I'm actually looking for. I apologize, I used this song before for showing compressors, but I wanted to use this because I know the female vocalist in here had a really bad ring in her vocal performance, so I wanted to use this as an example. Yeah, so I'm hearing it all over the B on Baby. I'm hearing it on Think. There's just a lot of it going on. Let's solo the vocal and try to listen to the word B and Think. Baby, don't think twice. Yeah, so it just really resonates through. And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to solo that frequency out so you can really hear it. And I like to use a de -er for that because it, it lets me use some really narrow multiband compression, something that I can't get with uh, multiband compressors. So let's zero it out and just try to listen for it ringing. Yeah, so we're hearing it between 2.3 to 2.8K, and I know you hate me right now for soloing that out because it's just it's such an awful frequency. So now, now that I've pointed that out, let me play it soloed, and then let me play it not soloed so you can really hear it being pointed out and see uh, what it sounds like. Baby, don't think twice. Baby, don't think twice. Yeah, you hear it on B and think it's it's really harsh. It resonates. is It's really, it's too powerful. And so I want to ease up on that. Yeah, we're going to use this de -er here, and we're just, we're not going to use it for sibilance like you normally would. We're just going to actually ease up and kind of compress that frequency down. Baby, don't think twice. You hear how that kind of pushes it down? Let me bypass it. Baby, don't think twice. Baby, don't think twice. Yeah, so it's just a little bit easier to listen to. And then I like to also search for it EQ-wise and kind of hear where that's at. Baby, 
Yeah, you can hear it at that uh, 2.4. And all I did was just zero out the frequency using this Fab Filter plugin. That way I don't have to like boost and make it super loud like this. Baby, don't. You know, I can just kind of zero out here where it's really clashing. And now that we got that, uh, we'll cut a little bit of that frequency out there. Not too much, though. Baby, don't think twice. Baby, don't think twice. Baby, don't think twice. Baby, don't. Baby, don't. And then the last thing, I'm just going to maybe do a little automation. I created a VCA track here, so I can still control this as my uh, master volume for that track. I'm just going to ease up a little bit on those parts. Just lower it. And I think, where's thing? thing to that way, still, when it, it cuts through the, the song on the speakers, it's not killing everybody's ears. It just pushes it down a little bit. Baby, don't think twice. All right, let's listen to it in the song. Might have been a little too aggressive right there of how much I turned it down, so I'll ease up on that. And then uh, we'll put it back in the, the mix here. And then we'll hear what the change is. You know, I'm probably being a little too much on the reduction here, so I'll ease up on that. Yeah, and think it'd probably come down just a little bit more yet. It's still ringing through. Yeah, so that's a, a good thing to look out for. It'll definitely help your vocals be a little easier to listen to if that has that frequency. And hey, my apologies if this has ruined audio for you and that's all you hear moving forward. Hey, as part of being an engineer, uh, I know there's a lot of things that have been ruined for me now, and that's uh, those are the things that I hear now when I listen to music. All right, so that was our process on getting rid of those resonant frequencies and vocals. And basically what we did was we grabbed a de and we used it as a very narrow multiband compression tool to be able to duck down on those frequencies. And we used some EQ to subtract the frequencies a little bit, and then we just used some automation to control the volume to duck down a little bit when those parts came through and we were able to see that the vocal performance was able to still be loud without having an ear piercing kind of feel to it so yeah hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully you got some stuff out of it as always feel free to comment below on what kind of tutorials that you'd like to see and we can always shoot some more tutorials on the stuff that you're all asking for and feel free to check me out all over social media at Realistic Productions. You can find me at the web, uh, realisticproductions.net. And as always, go to soundoracle.net if you were looking for the best quality samples and loops to have for your productions. And follow him everywhere at Sound Oracle.